Men of Morehouse, class of 2020, today marks the beginning of your real journey through life. All that you have done to bring you to this point is history. Your life up to this point has been preparation. Although the struggles and challenges have been great, it is nothing to compare with what lies ahead. Your Morehouse years are over. All the classes have been taken and the grades recorded. All the activities of your Morehouse career has been completed. The registrar validated that all your requirements were satisfied and you are ready to receive your diploma. But there's one final step yet to accomplish, the right that you are entitled. You must receive the mark and the light of Morehouse. Until that light is passed on to you for those who have come before you, you are still a man of Morehouse. It was really just a short time ago when you arrived here on campus for NSO. You met other young men from around the country that became good friends. You arrived one by one and formed a class. Now you leave one by one forever a brotherhood. Morehouse will supply memories you will hold dear in your heart and cherish forever. All these experiences will come to your mind as you begin life as a graduate. The journey through Morehouse may be over, but it is not complete. This ceremony is the final process of transition from Morehouse College into the world. This is the rite of final passage. Through this sacred place on the Red Hill, you will be released, but first you must be reminded of who you really are. The final rite begins now and ends when you are the light and spirit of Morehouse. And officially on Sunday, into the world, a Morehouse man. A man ultimately responsible for enduring the transformation of these young men into Morehouse men is our president, Dr. David Anthony Thomas. We ask you, Mr. President, are each of these young men ready to become Morehouse men? President Cousin and all Morehouse alumni, each member of this class of 2020, this 20th class of the new millennium is not only prepared, but is totally ready for this final passage towards becoming a true Morehouse man. Upon the recommendation of President Thomas, let the rite of final passage begin for the 136th graduation class of Morehouse College. You, members of the class of 2020, who Sunday will take your first steps into the world fully franchised as Morehouse men. Our relationship, yours and mine, runs deep. You are a class that saw Morehouse in your freshman year and through the first half of your sophomore year during a period of turmoil in its leadership. Some of you have reminded me that in the time you were here, you have had five presidents when we include the interim presidents who served during your first year and a half. And then, January 2nd, 20. 18, I came to be your president. Classes of Morehouse men are often known by the president who served them. You will have a choice. I hope that you will choose me because I choose you. You are a class 
that in the course of the latter half of your senior year, show that while many colleges were talking about surviving COVID, surviving the challenges of racial justice and inequity that spilled out into the streets, you proved that Morehouse was made for this moment in the way that as seniors, you set the stage and the model that led Morehouse to be a leader, not just in the Atlantic University Center Consortium, but in all of higher education for how to deal with this moment. It is not by accident, I think, that this class graduates in a year called 2020. 2020 is perfect vision. You can look at this year and ask yourselves, what did it teach you about what is important for you to carry into the future as Morehouse men? I would put at the top of that list that leadership matters. Leadership matters. And therefore, what we do at Morehouse, which is to develop leaders who will be in service to others, matters more today and will matter more in this century than it has ever mattered in the history of this country and the 153 years that Morehouse has served the world. I know many of you personally. You spend time in my office. You stopped me on Brown Street. You posed challenging questions to me about what to do with your lives. I hope that you have noticed that I've never told you what to do. I've tried to ask you the questions that put you on the path to discovering your own answer. For each of you will have to answer that question for yourself. I am agnostic about what you choose to do, but I am definite about the fact that you are prepared and therefore you are obligated to lead and to serve. That is your challenge. As you walk off this campus, I want you to look around. I want you to also remember that Morehouse was not a place that you went to. Morehouse is a place that runs through you. And that will always be with you. Unlike many institutions, we were not here for these four years simply to certify that you took 120 credits. We were here to be with you in the most important period of your formation as a man. Years from now, the question of who is a Morehouse man will be answered by what you do. Today, you are the tip of the Morehouse spear. So go and lead and serve. Thank you, Godspeed. I love you all. If you release me in King Chapel, if you release me in King Chapel, on May 17th, on May 17th, 2020, 2020, you'll get a man of Morehouse back.
during your new student orientation convocation, the speaker announced, to the class of 20, he paused, smiled, and announced again with great pride, to the class of 2020, the class with perfect vision. Inwardly, we all knew this would be an unforgettable and special class. We did not have any idea of the challenges that you would face during your Morehouse journey. I believe it is safe to say most all Morehouse classes have faced trying times during their matriculation. As you began your journey, life rolled out a continuum of unforeseen, unprecedented, life-threatening challenges that faced our world, our country, our communities, and our homes. You were forced to see a side of life that is truly as it is, unfiltered. However, in spite of these harsh realities, perhaps never seen before, your class remained focused, persistent, and determined to reach its educational goals. You were successful in and out of the classroom. You were successful in providing community service in your, in, to the hungry and less fortunate. You were successful in traveling the world. You were successful in making friends for life. You have what we call Morehouse resiliency. Now that you have arrived at the end of your journey, I can testify you have the inner fortitude, the disciplined mind, the moral character, and the perfect 2020 vision to have to make the world, and especially our communities, a better place to live. Continue to fulfill your parents' and guardians' wishes as you continue to aim high in setting new goals for yourselves. You will be a great Morehouse, you will be a great Morehouse men and a remembered class. I'm honored to have served you. If you recall, during your new student orientation program, several years ago, during, especially during the parent party ceremony, we asked you to record your sacrifices, the sacrifices that you intend to make, that you intended to make to, for this wonderful gift called Morehouse College. At the same time, we ask your parents and guardians to give us their wishes and their prayers for you as you made this journey. We took your parents and guardians' wishes and placed them in this special box called the Thurman Chess. Now, if you remember, the Thurman Chess is a chess that Mahatma Gandhi in India gave our illustrious alumnus Howard Thurman, class of 23, the Thurman Chess to be brought back to the United States. We have this evening that Thurman chest with the wishes and prayers of your parents. During this ritual, we will select several of those slips of papers representing the wishes and prayers, and we will read them as samples of your class. My young man, you have amazed me with all of your strength and de dedication. However, I am not your mother, but I feel as if you are my child. She is smiling down on you with all her glory and blessings. May God bless you, keep you strong. Love, your guardian, Robert. My wishes for my son, that you will become all that God has called you to be, that you take advantage of every opportunity this, co this college called Morehouse has to offer you. Take hold of this journey, start strong, so that you can finish even stronger. Love, Dad. My son, you must become the hope for the hopeless, the light in the dark, the guide for those in the wilderness. Welcome to the real world of responsibility. 
I hope you fully engage yourself in this thing called Morehouse and prepare yourself to live a life worth living. Love your dad and mom. And now we extinguish the wishes and prayers of the parents and guardians and the energy is transformed into the light to become Morehouse men. Graduation from an historically black college represents the culmination of numerous extraordinary sacrifices, not the least of which are financial and the wishes and prayers of families of the graduates. It is truly a sacred affair. Graduation from Morehouse is the absolute pinnacle of family's sacrifices, dedication, and the exercise of discipline by the students who are preparing for promises, promising careers. On the college's 100th anniversary, Dr. Mays described it this way, that a school founded slightly less than two years after the Civil War in the basement of the Springfield Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia, in a hostile environment with only 38 unlettered adult ex-slaves, enrolled with no money, with no, not much hope, with inadequate support for 100 years should survive is tantamount to a miracle. Dr. Mays went on to say, it could be called an act of God. In his charge to my graduating class of 1958, the words then spoken by Dr. Benjamin E. Mays are relevant to you, members of the class of 2020. And I quote, for good or ill, from this moment on, you will bear the mark, the stamp, the badge of Morehouse College. If you attain greatness, Morehouse College will attain greatness. If you attain mediocrity, Morehouse will be mediocre. If you fail in life, and God forbid, Morehouse will fail too. Morehouse can be no greater than you, the sum total of the deeds of its alumni. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you say, you will carry in your personality the mark of this college. And never forget, it is expected of Morehouse men that they make their mark in the world, an honorable mark. Achieve success, achieve fame, and acquire wealth if you can. But whatever you do, seek at all times to maintain the integrity of your soul. Die poor if need be, die unknown, unhonored, and unsung if need be, die of chain and chains if necessary, but never sell your soul for that which you know is wrong. 
Compromise if you must, but always in the direction of the ideal. Never compromise the principle. Keep the soul inviolate. Therein lies true freedom. From the eyes of Morehouse will follow you from now on in. From this moment on, you will wear the sign of Morehouse College. Wear it with dignity. End of quote. Among the alumni who surround you are men who distinguished themselves in every field of endeavor. They are alumni who followed the sound of African drums in a ceremonial welcoming you to our ranks as proud Morehouse men. Your National Alumni Association extends our wish for each of you to embrace a future that is committed to the exemplary ideals of Morehouse College, this dear, dear school. For in the words of Dr. Mays, it is expected of you. As Morehouse alumni, we have lineage that is extraordinarily rich and should greatly influence everything that we do in life. To members of the class of 2020, I invite you to imagine returning to this campus 62 years from today, in the year 2082. It is an honor to welcome to the 20th Rite of Final Passage Ceremony a distinguished member of the Morehouse College class of 1958, Charles M. Reynolds, Jr. Following his years at Morehouse College, Reynolds studied business administration at Atlanta University and later received a certificate in mortuary science from Wayne State University, along with a middle grade certificate from Albany State College. This extraordinarily successful Morehouse man began his career as a social studies teacher in Albany, Georgia. He left that position to become the first African-American bank examiner in the South with the United States Treasury Department, which began his meteoric career in the banking industry. He was appointed executive vice president, acting president of Citizens Trust Bank in Atlanta, and in 1974, he was named President Atlanta Atlantic National Bank in Norfolk, Virginia, a position he held until 1988. In 1988, Charles Reynolds formed Reynolds & Associates, a management company that purchased halfway homes for formerly incarcerated males and females in Washington, D.C. With the purchase of three other homes in Virginia, he became founder, chairman, and CEO of Rehabilitation Services, Inc., which provides educational, vocational training, health screening, financial counseling, and job training services to the formerly incarcerated. Throughout his career, Charles Reynolds has been a major supporter of Morehouse College. He is recipient of the 2020 Henry Morehouse Society Award and appreciated for his generosity of, of, of spirit as a lifetime supporter of Morehouse College. The Morehouse College Key Supporter Award in 2011, Patriot of the Year Award 2011, Alpha Phi Alpha Heroes Award for Excellence in 2003, to name just a few awards for which Charles M. Reynolds has been recognized. During his career, Charles Reynolds has been a member of various boards, some of which include SCI Systems, Morehouse College Board of Trustees, Chair of the Board Boggs Academy, Treasurer of Norfolk Visitors and Convention Bureau, Norfolk Chamber of Commerce and Georgia State University Foundation. His accomplishments are many, and his generosity of time and tender 
are recognized throughout the spectrum of education, religion, and industry. To paraphrase Dr. Howard Thurman, the professional life of this Morehouse man places this symbolic crown high above the heads of the class of 2020 and challenges you to grow tall enough to wear it. This Morehouse man is presented as a role model for you, members of the Morehouse College class of 2020. We are honored to have lighting the candle of the mystique performed by Charles M. Reynolds, Jr., class of 1958. The candle of mystique is lit. The candle represents the spirit of Morehouse. It represents the fulfillment of your parents' dreams and aspirations while here. It reflects your commitment and dedication to finish your journey here at Morehouse College. It is shared along with the spirits of all the graduates before you for 152 years. This sacred light is about to be passed on to you the next generation of Morehouse Me. As a Morehouse alumnus and chairman of the board of trustees of the college, I am honored to consecrate this candle of the mystique and to welcome you, the class of 2020, as you prepare to join this brotherhood as Morehouse Me. As the only post-secondary institution in America with a mission to educate and develop predominantly black men of character for leadership, our resolve has never wavered. On Sunday morning, you'll be, you will become Morehouse men. There will come a time when it will become crystal clear that the years spent here have left an indelible mark of confidence on your life. In 1923, then President John Hope, the first African-American president of the college, called upon Morehouse men to keep your eyes open and not allow a desire for a dollar or for popularity make you do things that are absolutely against our progress in the long run. Morehouse calls upon its sons to be committed to community, to speak truth to power, and to never compromise your integrity. So I urge you to be steadfast, honest, and true in the realization that wherever you go in life, you bear the mark of a Morehouse man. I call upon you to use it for the good of the human race. I call upon you to not falter in your support of dear old Morehouse, to seek out and become active in your National Alumni Association wherever you reside, for we expect nothing less for you. And my prayer of consecration is this. May you have the blessings of God as you begin your journey. May you be protected in your pursuits by the mystique that is Morehouse. Illuminate your path. May God shine his light upon you. And may this light guide forever your mind, hearts, and steps for his glory. Amen. Hear now the ancestral words from Morehouse's past. Coming up in a, in a segregated semi-slave society, uh, every black man has to learn what he is. And, and the black man was taught that he was a child of God, that, that God created all men on the basis of equality. Uh, this being true that we a man gets his status not from the state and not from his environment and not from the federal government, 
but he gets his status from God. So believing that, uh, I've always believed that I had as much right to walk to earth with dignity and pride as anybody else. And I suppose it is from that that I have gone on all these years trying to make my contribution to society uh, in dignity and with dignity and inspiring uh, uh, black boys and girls to, to do the same thing. When I came to Moore House, when the endowment was slightly more than a million dollars, I came to Moore House because it was a great institution and is a great institution. Great in hope, great in ambition, great in ideals, great in aspirations. The men who taught here led Moore House men to believe that whatever was possible under the sun, a Moore House man could do it. Samuel Howard Archer, Benjamin Brawley, John Hope, B.T. Harvey, and many others were here when I came. Many of my leading students were at Moe House at that time. They became great leaders. I have in mind the Lawler boys. They went into medicine. The Payne boys, two went into education and one into medicine. The neighbors, both went into education. And that was Howard Sermon. And when the call came to me to come to Mohouse in 1940, I could not help but think of the stimulating friends and the stimulating students I had had in my first teaching experience. I came to Mohouse because it was a great institution, great in ideals and great in aspiration, and great in determination. The freshman entering Mohouse College, uh, he didn't have to be around here, but two or three days before he pulled something out of the air, which led him to believe not only that great things were expected of him, but, it, but that he could achieve great things. This is the chapel in the sale hall. I think this is where I made my greatest impact on the Mohouse students. It was here where I said to them that they could be poor, they could be black, their ancestors may have been slaves, they may be segregated or discriminated against, but they could still be free in their minds and in their souls because no man is a slave until he accepts that fact in his mind. It is perhaps here that I made my greatest impact on Martin Luther King, Jr. Now, everywhere I go in the United States, uh, any state in the Union, I'm likely to run into somebody who, who would tell me that my life has meant something to them. And many times they can point out the place and the time and what I said or what I did that influenced them and inspired them to go on. So if, uh, if I made any contribution at all, I think it is uh, inspiring uh, men and women, black and white, but particularly black, black students, to, to walk the earth with dignity and pride and and work hard and not expect anything to be given to them because they're black, but they got to earn it. And I think uh, uh, my contribution is in that area. With all due respect to the buildings I have called to be built and the endowment that I have, uh, little endowment I have helped to raise for Mohawk. But I think my contribution is in people. Benjamin Elijah Mays. Mental Morehouse, class of 2020, the incredible class of 2020, the historic class of 2020, a class that had to endure changes, challenges, and hardships. But through it all, 
you have remained resilient, committed, steadfast, honest, and true. You have persevered in faith, and now your faith has brought you to this point, the right of final passage. Four years ago was the start of your transformation into a Morehouse man. Four years ago, at this parents parting ceremony, Reverend Dr. Carter told you and your parents that Morehouse's job was to get you across the river standing up. President Thomas says you've made it. You are standing up and you are prepared to become Morehouse men, but not yet. Before you can step on the shore and join your fellow alumni brothers, there's one thing and one final thing you must understand. You need to understand the real purpose of this journey at Morehouse. Dr. Mays said there's something in the air at Morehouse that it only takes a few days and students believe they can accomplish great things. That's the key. Dr. Mays knew and understood better than most the reason. He knew that four years ago you stepped onto hallowed and sacred ground. This school was created by God to specifically prepare black men for moral and ethical servant leadership. Men that are prepared to change their communities and his world. There's a reason we bow our heads asking the Holy Spirit to make us steadfast, honest, and true to dear old Morehouse and her ideals in all things that we do. It's a constant reminder and a prayer to guide us. We are men of faith, developed to provide leadership in all areas of life. So before you can leave, you need to hear one last time before you cross over into a Morehouse man. And just as God told Moses to tell Joshua to gather the children of Israel at the banks of the Jordan River before they could cross over to their promised land, you're at your river about to cross. He told Moses to remind Joshua to tell them about their ancestry, their legacy, God's faithfulness, and his promise. Three times Joshua was told, be strong, be courageous, so that you will be prosperous and successful. So you too are gathering here to remind you of Morehouse's legacy, its ancestry, its expectations for you before you can cross over to become a Morehouse man. Make no mistake about it. That same God that led Moses and his people out of Africa, the same God that told Joshua to lead his people into the promised land, the same God that directed Jesus to come down to earth and up on the cross to save his people, it is the same God that allowed you to come to Morehouse and brought you through this journey. Hear now our story of why you were here as men of Morehouse. 400 years ago, 1619, 20 of our forefathers from Undingo were kidnapped, enslaved, and brought to Virginia colony in America. And the Lord immediately heard their cries, their chants for freedom from the bottom of ships. In the tobacco, cotton, and rice fields, the drums, the chants, the songs, and the cries for freedom grew louder and louder. In 1739, after the Stono Rebellion in South Carolina, the British passed the Negro Act of 1740, silencing the drums, making it illegal to gather, to grow our own food, to travel without permission, and to learn to read and write. And they branded us chattel, the Lord knew he needed to speak to his children directly. So he shined his light into America during what was called the Great Awakening, awakening abolitionists in the North and then the light traveled into the South looking for fertile ground from which to begin the process of freeing his people from physical bondage, but also mental bondage. During that decade, that light took root on Beach Island, South Carolina, in the plantation of George Gelfrin, 
and rested in the heart of a freedman named David George. The power of the Spirit provided a light to Dave George to gather people in the brush armors, and that church became Silver Bluff Baptist Church in 1750, the first independent black American church in America. The light burned in the hearts of men longing to be free long before America was free itself, 37 years later. In 1808, members of that congregation took the spirit and the light across Savannah River to Augusta, Georgia, and they started Springfield Baptist Church. It grew to be the largest Baptist church in the state of Florida. In 1863, as we know, the Lord told Abraham Lincoln to stop the war, change the law, and free his people. In 1865, the Civil War finally ended, freeing our ancestors from physical bondage. And by that time, our numbers had grown for, to, from 20 to 4 million. Even though they knew and believed the word by faith that was in their hearts from the spiritual life in Africa, they could neither read nor write it. So they created schools and institutions all over the South and we call them HBCUs. And they were all on a hill, Howard University, Hampton, Talladega, Fisk. However, the Lord wanted to create a very special place just for black men. And he gave that to Springfield Baptist Church, that church that started in 1750. And the light, a special light, was placed in the basement of 38 freed slaves. And he wanted to teach men to teach and to preach. That special light burned brightly in the basement of that church, but Augusta was not the right place to hold the light. So in 1881, he moved the light to a basement of Friendship Baptist Church in Atlanta, alongside his institution for women. But the Lord didn't want his light to remain in a basement. He wanted his light to be seen by all. So he looked for the highest hill in Atlanta. And that hill belonged to the richest man in America, John D. Rockefeller. But God sent a messenger to Rockefeller and said, I need that hill. And he got that hill. And in 1889, the Lord said, I'm going to build me a house on that hill. So he built the tallest building at the time on the highest hill in Atlanta and he placed his light and he placed a bell to ring. God was so pleased with that house that he built that he named it after the man who asked Rockefeller for the hill. He named it after Reverend Henry Morehouse. Morehouse on the hill in Atlanta. But the Lord could see that his people were getting educated, but still not totally free in their mind. Obstacles and challenges and laws were placed on them to suppress their potential. They needed to be free in mind as well as body. So here's the miraculous mission of Morehouse, a, distant, a disciplined mind who lives lives of leadership and service. And so the Lord told a Morehouse man, Mordecai Johnson, president of Howard University, to send the Morehouse man, Howard Thurman, to go to India to start a school so he could meet a small Hindu activist named Mahatma Gandhi. Thurman met and talked with Gandhi and returned to Howard University with two things. One is that chess we have here, and the other was a prophecy. Gandhi said that it may be through the Negroes that the unadulterated message of nonviolence will be delivered to the world. Think about this. The year was 1935. Martin Luther King was six years old. The Lord had set a timetable of 20 years for on December 5th, 1955, all hell was to break loose in America and a woman by the name of Rosa Parks would utter the words, no more, and Martin would lead other HBCU graduates 
to start changing the world just like Gandhi said. And he did it. And Martin took that light of Morehouse with him into a nation, cursed the darkness, and he set people free in mind and soul. And on April 4th, 1968, the Lord came down and took Martin back from the mountaintop. And he said, well done, my good and faithful servant leadership. That special light had done its work through reconstruction, through World War I, through Jim Crow, through the Great Depression, through segregation, through World War II, through Korea and Vietnam, and all social and cultural challenges, the light never flickered. The light of Morehouse has been taken into politics with Sanford Bishop, Julian Bond, Cedric Richmond, uh, Randall Woodward, into government with Lou Sullivan, David Satcher, Robert Mallett, Jay Johnson, into technology with Paul Young, Donald Hopkins, Dr. Walter Massey, and 13% of all black PhDs in computer science into sports with Edwin Moses and Jerome Boger and Harold Ellis and into the arts, John David Washington, Samuel L. Jackson, Spike Lee, and in business with Willie Wood, Maceo Sloan, C.D. Moody, and it goes on and on and on. Morehouse is different. Morehouse is dedicated and disciplined minds and the number one producer of blacks going to Harvard Business School. In education, Michael Lomax, Calvin Butts, Eddie Galt, and we go on and on. There is a reason for Morehouse. There is a reason that 50 college presidents have come out of this institution. These black men and many more broke through ceilings because they breathed the air and accepted the responsibility to carry the light into the world. Class of 2020, the 136th graduating class at Morehouse College, behold the light of Morehouse, a candle in the dark. And a question, gentlemen, is this. How will you use this light? For you enter a world of darkness, void of your contribution and your service as a graduate of Morehouse College. Will you be the light? And the question, gentlemen, is how will you use that light? Will you use your knowledge here that you gain here? Will you use it for service? Will you use it for knowledge for good? Will you use it for your community? For how a man uses his knowledge bears witness to his character, his integrity, and his reputation. How will you use the light, my brother? Remember these words from Dr. Mays. It is not sufficient for Morehouse to produce clever graduates, men fluent in speech and able to argue their way through, but rather honest men men who can be trusted in public and private, who are sensitive to the wrongs and the sufferings and the injustices of the society, and who are willing to accept the responsibility for correcting the ills. The world needs Morehouse men. And on Sunday morning, when you hear the dear old Morehouse, I want you to sing it in a new way. Hear now the words with new meaning not just a song, but a commitment. Dear old Morehouse, dear old Morehouse, we have pledged our lives to thee and will ever, yea forever, give ourselves in loyalty. True forever, true forever to old Morehouse may we be. So to bind each son the other into ties more brotherly. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, make us steadfast, honest, and true to old Morehouse and her ideals and in everything we do. So gentlemen, graduating class of 2020, I have three questions to ask you now that you're about to cross over. Will you accept the responsibility to honor the legacy of the light 
and be a loyal Morehouse man? Will you commit to take your light and to serve your family, your community, your nation, and your college in time, talent, and tender? And lastly, are you ready? Are you ready to take your light into the world and let it shine bright? Are you ready, gentlemen? Are you ready? Then if you are ready, you are ready to receive your light. Now we pass on the spirit and light of Morehouse to a new generation of Morehouse men. receive the spirit and the light of Morehouse. You can now extinguish the flame for it is within you.
Kunda 